Thank you very much, Maria. Welcome to round number two of the limited portion of the World Championship. We're here in Las Vegas once again <laughs> and cannot wait to see who is going to be crowned champion. Corey Baumeister, what are you looking forward to seeing in this round as we've seen both players' decks? Yeah, seeing both players' decks, they both look really strong. You know, Chris has been kind of dominating limited so oh, far yeah. this year, so exciting to watch the master at work, and I'm just excited to watch the match. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. So let's jump into the action here. Chris Ferber is uh, going to be rocking the sweet list that we saw, you know, being able to animate that uh, Restless Vine Stalk in the previous round. Yeah. So, so cool. I don't think I've seen nice. anyone do that. Even Marshall and Paul just like, hey, wait a second. <laughs> and this is just like the next level of mastery that we can expect from players at this level. Chris Ferber finding all these different little tricks to, uh, you know, get the advantage here and, uh, you know, improve his record. Yep, absolutely. It looks like Chris did take a mulligan there with six cards, but both players opening hands, very functional. Maybe a, a, a couple extra lands here for Francesco, but still very good hands from both players. I'm going to plant some beans here and get some extra lands down. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris getting ahead in the ramp game, as he uh, is able to do there with the beanstalk worm. Pretty good critter to get down late game, you know, with reach, which yeah. is pretty relevant as we've seen. Quite a lot of flyers in this format. Yeah, it's definitely one of the more medium style of creatures, but when you're at the World Championship, when you're really drafting against such great players, you don't get these A plus decks. No. So sometimes you gotta play some of these, you know, average looking cards instead of just absolute haymakers yeah. left and right. Like, you know, Kindled Heroism, for example, two of in Francesco's deck. Yeah. You know, it's not something we typically see because, you know, you're just not getting the high quality cards that you'd expect from playing on Arena or online even. So. Exactly, yep. And it's still fine pump spell, you know, yeah. I mean, pump spells end up being quite good in this format yes. in general, with it being so aggressive, mm. you know, that pushing through damage uh, like that yeah. ends up being very strong. It's a prophetic prism to follow up here for Ferber to help him filter some colors through, whatever you may need. And there we're gonna see the knight alongside the Hopeful Vigil down on the board for Francesco. Yep, and then Chris Ferber picked up some nice draws there. We see the troll, one of my favorite cards here, Fonz Bane Troll. Um, if you can pick up land number five, that's one of the best plays you can do. Yeah. Just play the troll, immediately get rid of your aura, mm -hmm. get rid of your monster roll, and fight a creature right away. Yeah. Um, really yeah. something Chris will be looking for because it's really brutal if you play that card and then it just gets destroyed immediately and you don't get that fight. Mm -hmm. It's basically a supercharged <laughs> Agatha's champion, <laughs> which sure. Chris also has, but decides to not even yeah. go for it, All doesn't right. want to deal with any of these kind of medium-ish creatures. Yeah, so you, know, the, you know, the red cap V for the night, not really yeah. something to worry about at this point, yeah. both sitting at a healthy life total. So holding on to that phone's main troll and perhaps waiting until there's another roll in hand, which we do see in uh, Ferocious Werefox with the guard change, able to uh, add a monster roll back onto the Fawn's yeah. Bane troll. But yeah, like you mentioned, Agatha's Champion and Fawn's Bane troll, Francesco is in big trouble here if yeah. those two cards are coming down the pipe. Especially with the Ferocious Were Werefox, I was kind of shocked to not see the troll getting value right now since you can kind of recharge it mm -hmm. later. But it looks like Chris is just really trying to say if you have any type of removal, use it on these other yeah. creatures so that the troll can just run rampant. Yeah, but as we can see in Francesco's hand, nothing of the sort right now. Three planes, kindled heroism, and another red cap thief. So in terms of the quality of the creatures in hand, Chris is definitely winning this game. Oh, for sure, yep. And I mean, that's kind of the story of these type of archetypes. You know, we see these Boros decks, and while this is, you know, one of the best archetypes that you can draft in yeah. this format, it is a lot of little creatures working together, get celebration triggers, and kind of go wide on your yeah. opponent, where green-black is kind of the heavy hitters, yeah. the big stuff, the fighting creatures, and then timely removal spells yeah. like Candy Grapple, maybe something that Chris doesn't necessarily have in his list a lot of actual mm. factual removal, but has the removal in yeah. the form of these creatures. But I mean, who needs removal when you've just got big beaters? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at this point, you know, Chris is just happy to sit back and let Francesco get aggressive because at the moment, anything that attacks in is not going to take down this beanstalk worm because of Kindle yep. Heroism is just a plus one. That's not enough to kill this creature. Yep, exactly. Just plus one, plus oh, not really able to fight through. Yeah. And now it'll, we'll see if Chris wants to just immediately activate here, or if you want to wait a little bit. There is, you know, a good chunk of mana available, so it's kind of risky, but 
you do have to activate it at sorcery speed, so you know, just doing yeah. it now is perfectly reasonable, and it looks like it's going to work. Yeah. So Fawn's Bane Troll ridding itself of That's the roll to take care of one of the critters. Red Cap Thief in the bin here for Francesco. And uh, this sacrifice, so we won't see any bargaining of the Hopeful Vigil. That's something you don't really want to be doing. Yeah. Kind of feels desperate, and Chris is going to be picking up on that. Absolutely, especially when you're getting rid of that many treasures. Like, Francesca was only, uh, you know, being mana efficient with one mana, because mm -hmm. otherwise you could do that at upkeep, keep your treasures. But Francesco's deck isn't really trying to create these gigantic no. creatures, these really expensive mm -hmm. cards. So just trying mm -hmm. to hit playables to be paired with this uh, uh, yeah. pump spell. Edgewall bag. Look at those good boys and girls with yeah. a rat in their head. It's so cool. I love this <laughs> art. It's one of my favorites in the set. <laughs> and we've seen a lot of cards like this, you know, the four mana create, four mana three three that does something, create a creature with it. Yeah. And and they're just always good. You know, yeah. we've seen this through Limited throughout the entire year, you know, maybe the last 10 years <laughs> as well. Those cards are always overperformers, and this card is, uh, you know, no exception here. Oh, yeah. Oh, here's this Such combo. Great. Come on, hey, this there so we go. good. Guard change time. So, oh, yeah, we're going to yeah. get the uh, monster roll reattached to the Fallen's Bane troll. And uh, I don't think this uh, poor pupper is long for this world here. Yeah. And just look at the value that this troll is having here. Agatha's Champion <laughs> is a great card and everything, but you don't get that repeated effect yeah. like you get from the troll. One of the strongest cards in a set. Nice. All right. So, he, we see Kindled Heroism actually, uh, you know, earning its place here. Yeah. Giving yeah. the pump to the pupper and uh, forcing the treat there. That's a pretty big blow for Chris. Luckily, does have Agatha's Champion as a backup fighter. But like you mentioned, it's not a repeat, it's not a repeatable removal spell. And just brought it back as well. <laughs> you know, so now has it in hand. Just has probably Chris's best two cards yeah. uh, in his deck in hand right now. So everything kind of coming up, Chris, so far. Yep. Fell Horseman, Graveyard Recursion in general. It's like one of my favorite things to do yes. in any format, you know. And, and it's just such a such a massive thing to fight through as the opposing player. It's like, oh, yes, I've beaten this thing. Oh, it's coming back. Great. Yep. Absolutely. And we see uh, Francesco using two different pump spells to only trade for creatures. You know, usually you want to be using these pump spells to just force through your mm -hmm. creature. So not necessarily ideal, but you got to get rid of some of these big creatures yeah. to be able to push through damage. Yeah, he's doing a great job of it, getting rid of the uh, Beanstalk Worm. Yeah. Does know about the Fawn's Bane Troll that's coming back. Monstrosity, a pickup here for Chris. And then the Agatha's Champion, which we're still waiting to see make an appearance on the Francesco side of things. Just two planes in hand. Yep. A rat, a red cap thief, and a dream. We'll have the uh, the card in the adventure to come back in shortly, though. So what Chris is really thinking now is to play either you know just double spell like this, or go for the Fontaine troll, and fight right here, mm -hmm. or sacrifice. Um, the Prophetic Prism with the Agatha's Champion, but realizes you don't want to give up the Prism quite yet for other splashes. You know, we saw the Creature Land just do so much yeah. work that it's not really worth it to get rid of the Prism yet. You'd much rather sacrifice, let's say, the food from the Minstrosity uh, if that were to uh, go to the graveyard. Yeah, so Two-Headed Hunter joins the fight here. So yep. a big creature now down on the board yep. for Francesco. And Francesco drew a card, you know, drew the, the Merry Bards there to be mm -hmm. able to have a nice follow-up for next turn. Yeah, stick that uh, young roll onto the rat, perhaps. Yep. 16 to 20. Yep. Get the most value out of the uh, smallest toughness creatures. And now this two-headed hunter is just really, really threatening because even with the creatures, the two creatures that Chris mm -hmm. has right now, you know, it's just a trade yeah. um, with Menace here, so not necessarily ideal. Mm -hmm. And uh, neither of these creatures can fight profitably to deal with this hunter because yeah. Fawn's Bane Troll comes in as a 5-5 five, five, but goes down to a 4 by yeah. the time you fight. Yeah, and the 5-4 uh, Menace is certainly something Chris will want to get off this yep. battlefield. So one of these creatures is going to have to take one for the team here. Yep. I'm going to attack the monster roll and fight the red cap thief. All right, let's go. Red cap thief out of the way. So Fawn's Bane Troll remains as a 4-4. And we see those three exiled creatures mm -hmm. there uh, on, on Francesco's side and all dealt with by the troll, just showing how impressive <laughs> that card is. Yeah. Thankfully, Francesco's not playing uh, any graveyard recursion, as far as yeah. I can tell. So he's not going to be too mad about that, but certainly something to keep an eye out. And a really impressive stat here. Chris Ferber largely made it to this uh, tournament on the back of his incredible limited record. Yeah. Is 11 and 2 as of right now on the season. 
I don't know if I've had 11 limited wins in my career, you know. So this is uh, <laughs> truly impressive stuff by Chris, really a master of the 40 card format. We all know you like your constructed formats, Corey. It's okay. <laughs> So flick a coin, taking care of the monstrosity. We see that food token left behind. I really do like flick a coin. Me too. It's such a Lots. sweet card. Yeah, it's really a card that doesn't scream like, oh, this is an amazing card or anything. But the way it plays out, yeah. all the, the X ones in the formats that are really strong, mm -hmm. Minstrosity being one of the, the higher um, pick orders oh, yeah. as far as black commons go, yeah. and just having a card that cleanly two for ones yeah. is, is really incredible. And uh, one interesting thing that uh, Frank Carson mentioned for us with Chris Faber in the previous match is that in game two, he sided out all of his one toughness creatures yep. so that cards like you know, flick a coin and, uh, you know, all of the uh, the one powered creatures just yeah. to increase the average stats of the power and toughness, making yeah. his creature quality a little bit better and uh, making the his opponent's removal worse. So Makes sense. it's a great way to get to get an edge in the limited format. All right, draw here for Chris Ferber, Agatha's champion still sitting in hand. Fawn's main troll needs another roll to get on a roll once again. <laughs> what did we find? Ooh. Ooh. That Hello, is amazing. <gasps> Agatha's Soul Cold. I love this card. It's I'm incredibly powerful. You know, uh -huh. it's it's made its uh, you know, it's made its presence known in a lot of mm. different formats. Mm. Sure has. You know, even if you don't get the activated abilities part of it, yeah. just being able to chew on graveyards and put one one counters on your creatures, that's a clock in and of itself. Exactly. Very parts. So just trying to pressure damage as mm -hmm. much as possible from Chris and just trying to get this game over with, recognizing, yeah, I'm probably going to, well, I'm for sure going to take five oh, yeah. from this Menace creature. Um, but yeah, yeah. impressive yeah, stuff. No, I, I, I feel the same way there, Francesco. I don't know what you were doing in that instance, but game two yeah. could potentially be a little less of a struggle against these massive creatures for Francesco. So. Yep. Let's uh, see what the players have in their opening hands okay. here. We've got Merry Bards, Return Triumphant, so there is Graveyard Recursion. An unassuming Sage. Nice uh, card to play on four if you don't need it down on turn two, along with the Red Cap Thief. But we will see the unassuming Sage hit the board and just try and get this game over with as soon as possible. Yeah, nice flexible card. You know, it is kind of unassuming at the two <laughs> roll and kind of unassuming at the four roll, but just <laughs> perfectly great at that curve filler yeah. um, to really help out. And that's really what these Boros decks are all about. You need to be curving out yeah. and really putting the pressure on your opponent. And it also triggers celebration when yeah. you do it for four mana, which ends up being very strong. That's certainly relevant in those archetypes, as we see Red Cap Thief hit the board along with the treasure token. And uh, we did plant some beans, so we are four lands in, and we have a good old Howling Gale Fang. It's I like, love that it's like, start. You know, questing beast at home, almost. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Questing <laughs> beast, you know, little extra steps, but being able to ramp mm -hmm. with that worm into a 4-4 haste, you know, something that the green-black color pair usually doesn't have is yeah. any kind of haste threats on a relevant body like this. So really, really nice draw there for Chris. Absolutely. And now we see the young hero roll being put on the Merry Bards. So yep. they'll get a little bigger and we'll be able to attack into the Howling Gale Fang and perhaps Perfect. trade. Yep, absolutely. Just trying to get some damage in, yeah. push through the 4-4, and that's really the best creature to do it. You can put it on a 2-2, two -two and it'll yeah. still get to that 4-4 eventually, but it's going to get eaten if, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if there's no combat trick backup. Exactly. Savior of the Sleeping in hand, Hopeful Vigil, and Return Triumphant. So if we do see one of the uh, three mana or less creatures sure. go down, they will return. Okay. Triumphant, as the card says. <laughs> <laughs> Decides to just progress the battlefield instead of doing some of the really nice plays that you can do with with Stab Wound mm -hmm. is put on a 2-3, <laughs> you know, just to lower it to an 0-1. Then uh, you're really yeah. priced into never attacking again, so you know you really want to let the board develop yeah. before you do that. But then, I mean, Stab Wound dealing two damage a turn, yeah. a removal spell that's also killing your opponent, can be very valuable. Oh, yeah. And there's not that many, you know, sacrifice a creature effects in this format. Yeah, you know, unless bargain, it's an artifact. Or, yeah. yeah, exactly. Bargain very specifically says token. So yeah, yeah I'm not going to get any of these uh, non-token creatures off the board easily. So we'll see where that stab wound does end up. But for now, it's going to be Savior of the Sleeping on the battlefield. And in we go with an attack, a block with a Verdant Outrider on the Savior of the Sleeping, along with a not dead after all. So that will return with a Wicked Roll. Yep. 
one of the cards that was sided in by Chris as well. Mm -hmm. And Francesco's pretty fine with this creature going to the graveyard with that return, with that return triumphant, bringing it back. Then you can trigger the roll as well. So perfectly fine trade for both players, yeah. you know, especially since Chris traded up here with just a one drop here. Uh, excellent trade for him. Yeah. Another Ooh, five drop, not necessarily nice. ideal right now, but yeah. that will be great at you know even sacrificing that roll to get um, a fight in here on another yeah. one of these creatures. Just needing the fifth land drop here, so a bit of a clunky turn, I would say. Yep. There is a Sky Beast tracker, and that is you know a way to get a couple extra food tokens with the five drops that are in hand. So yep. that's going to be the place that Chris Fair returns to at the moment. Yeah, and not the best card, mm -mm. you know, not necessarily a premium green common by any means, but that is a very good card at slowing down some of these Boros decks. Yeah. Uh, and that's really all Chris is trying to do, slow down. The late game definitely favors Chris, yeah. um, so just trying to get there. Yeah, but I'm, I'm quite impressed with Francesco's sticking power, you know, getting off these creatures. And it just shows again how important combat tricks are in most yeah. limited formats, I would say. Especially an aggressive format like Wilds of Eldraine, yeah. the, the pump spells get to be even better, which kind of makes these, you know, 4 wall type creatures mm. a little bit worse because, <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of pump spells running You'd be nice to my unruly catapult, okay? <laughs> You're a catapulter? I am a catapulter. I mean, that I is a fun deck like to drop. I do like digging people, There so, you, you know. go. <laughs> Return Triumphant going to bring back the Merry Bards. Okay. Let's see if... Uh, we get the young hero yeah, roll attached to it, and oh, then the one. trigger to put the other one on the unassuming Thanks. sage. Yeah, Lovely. Right. Yep, sure. Very nice. All right, so just gumming up this board here, making it very difficult for Chris to attack. Yeah, and getting some large attacks ready to go if you can ever clear off some of these four toughness creatures. Now there is that grasp of fate, which is definitely going to help you know, clear the way for one of these creatures, but there is still two problematic creatures here. And even more, if Chris can find land five, mm -hmm. Chris also needs, you know, one of these prophetic prisms ways. <laughs> oh no, six drop is not what you want, but you do have the ability to use the adventure side to get yeah. some value here. Bear down. But not amazing. <laughs> and we'll see if Chris has the restraint to wait on that bear down because you have a much better bear down target on that, uh, you know, Oblivion Ring style effect yeah. um, that we're going to see sure. from Francesco. Nice. Okay, so Stab Wound is okay. uh, going to take care of the Merry Bards, but I believe it stays. Did it not have a plus one, plus one on it? No, it just had a young roll. So only just the young one roll, attack, yes, yeah, correct. Yep. Correct. So just wanting to get it off the battlefield yep. and, uh, you know, not go for any of these tricks of just say, all right, I want to put it on your 2-3, mm -hmm. the way worse creature, yeah. and uh, try to deal damage. Chris is just like, I need to stall. I have nothing but gasoline in hand. You yeah. know? So just trying to get to a little bit more of the late game and not wanting to have to uh, trade with, with uh, Chris's 4-2. Yeah. There we go. Grasp of Fate. Going to take care of the Howling Galefang. Only temporarily, though, as we yeah. do have Bear Down and Answer in hand. And now we'll see the attack in for three here with the Unassuming Sage. Ah, uh, okay. So this is uh, this is pretty <laughs> nice. You know, you can block with the 2-4. Plenty fine. You could be running into a possible pump spell, which Francesco is definitely representing, mm -hmm. especially with that one mountain oh, left yeah. open. Super you know, you can kind of play a little bit of mind games. Like, I'm going to mm. leave it up this land. No, I'm going to leave up this land mm -hmm. of the pump <laughs> spell you've already seen. Yeah. Okay, Chris calling yep. his bluff though. And didn't have it, but still just getting that that counter is great here. And we will see this bear down deal with the uh, grasp of fate. Yep. And then you could attack again, but not great attacks unless Chris has another way to push through. All right, let's see, do we find land over five? Looks like it. Nope, no, we found, uh, okay, we found Wicked Visitor. At least something to play on curve here. You can bear down on um, the enchantment mm -hmm. here and then play a two drop. But yeah, Chris is kind of getting to that point where it's like, okay, you don't really need land five for the last couple of turns, but it's getting to time. You need, yeah. you need it now. And turn passing back again. The Verdant Outrider does have the activated ability, but unfortunately, they are not just little tutus on that side of the board as uh, Francesco is growing. That Saviour the Sleeping quite nicely. Yeah, that is uh, getting out of hand pretty quickly. Currently three counters on it, so it's a five six. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna chow on anything that Chris sends his way at the moment. 
Land five needed here for Chris Faber. It's up a game already. Both players sitting at a very nice 1-0 to start their World Championship run here this weekend. Yep, absolutely. And we see a nice hand here still. We got Stroke and Savior of the Sleeping in hand. So got some good options. Mm. Can't deploy both of them. Big things here for the Italian player. Where does he go to combat? Let's turn things sideways, unless it has vigilance, of course. <laughs> the Sage going to its maxed up 4-4 uh, with the young roll here. So now able to trade with, you know, pretty much any creature here. There's some double blocks Chris can choose to do. Or can just block with the 4-2. Wicked Visitor, where are you going to end up? Yeah, and the Stroke of Midnight does make things pretty tricky. Being able to really put a wrench in any kind of double block, yeah. that would maybe be profitable. You know, putting a 2-2 two -two and a 2-4 up against your 4-4 four -four seems like a nice block. You're trading up with your 2-4 um, for their 4-4. Four -four. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, then you do have to be wary of it. And it looks like Chris is going for it. Francesco didn't have the pump spell before but is going to have the way to deal with it now, if he so chooses, Yeah, and does not. All right, so we see the trades yeah. happen there. The Sky Beast Tracker out of the way. Wicked Visitor remains. Down to 13 goes Chris, who is still looking for land number five. And now, here comes Trouble, make it double. That was interesting to me. If you were going to attack with the 4-4, four -four, and you want to leave up mana mm -hmm. for stroke, you would think that you would have cast stroke. If not, yeah. you would want to cast the sleeper to get an extra counter on there. So maybe Francesco thought there was going to be a different set of blocks where he could yeah. maximize that stroke of midnight. Yeah. Decision change, you know, post blocks. Yep. Stroke of midnight. And hand, just representing yeah. pump spells, yeah. representing tricks yeah, you know, is very important as well. You know, just just a couple extra thinks yeah. being uh, forced here on Chris by Francesco. Yep. Yeah. Representing, he's got many things to do, but this is what he's decided, so. And realistically would not have mattered at all, yeah. even if it was a 3-4, <laughs> it's still getting taken down by the Agatha's champion. Yeah. Probably my favorite card of the set. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, definitely favorite uncommon. That card I'm gonna is so incredible. I'm going to tell Greta, Sweet Tooth Scourge, you said that, because you told me yesterday she was your favorite. I am a Golgari fan, I must <laughs> say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so land number five finally unlocks the hand here for Chris. Sir Armand, the Redeemer, in hand. No white mana to cost it, though, so he's going to be looking for a fixer of some sort to get that out of hand. Charm Clothier, a nice pickup here for Francesco, looking very strong in this game. Yep, and able to cast that right now. Perfectly reasonable card. Mm -hmm. Going to get that royal roll. Plus one, plus one, royal. and ward. So making removal a little tougher for Chris. He's already struggling in Big the card. mana department. Yeah, and that's a 7-8. But, you know, I mean, that's perfectly <laughs> fine. But if you attack with that, the two 4-4s, four you're trading a 4-4 four four for a 7-8. So really no great attacks. Mm -hmm. But it's really set up for next turn. You attack with that 7-8. And then you have that stroke of midnight if you do double block with two yeah. four fours, but not able to really do it right now. Francesco is certainly hoping that his own Sir Armand shows up. Ooh, there's the planes. Okay, so you can cast uh, Sir Armand. There uh, we go. But yeah. now you have six mana, so you can just, you know, you can Storm play Vanguard. either Let's of go. these cards. Yes. Right, it's going to be the big old worm first and foremost. Beanstalk Worm on the board. 5 4 with Reach. There is that flyer, of course, and uh, Beanstalk Worm will uh, take care of that so if there's no pump spells. So this is a very you know, interesting spot here that Chris put um, Francesco in, and that is not playing your six drop, playing your five drop, and leaving open that one swamp, You know, maybe mm -hmm. representing not dead after all, something along those lines. Okay. Uh, but looks like Francesco is just leaning into it. <laughs> Stroke of Midnight takes out the worm. So similarly in, in game one, you know, put out something that you're not too sad to see yeah. die go and go from there. So one human adds to the board here of Chris Ferber. Okay. Yeah, and Chris just wanted to get a reach blocker yeah. into place. So this 3-3 can't be taking you down. Not an option anymore. So you could very easily see the Vanguard coming into play. Yeah, and one weakness we saw in Chris's deck is there's not that much spot removal. 
Yeah, not much at all. Yeah, it's literally just creatures that like to hit things, and if they can't take care of the biggest butt on the board in that uh, Savior of the Sleeping, well, he's going to have a bit of a problem in this matchup. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Crits to just sneak through damage at any point here. You know, there's really not many ways to deal with a 6-7 a <laughs> Ward 1 right now. Mm -hmm. And Chris doesn't really have the reach, doesn't really have a lot of flyers, you know, to push through damage. So Chris is going to be on the back foot for quite a while and going to need some good draws, maybe going to need some not so great draws uh, for Francesco to yeah. uh, claw back into this. Yeah, and Sir Armand, though costable, uh, is not yeah. really doing all that much. There's no auras on the battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. For Chris's creatures. So just going to play the Stormkeld Vanguard and say go. This Clothier is going to close the game out very quickly here. If it's not dealt with. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. You can copy any of these kind of enchantments. So you can copy yeah. the Royal Roll. You can copy the Hopeful Vigil. Yeah. And you can always keep copying these. You can copy the Hopeful Vigil, sack one of them. Sack it, and yeah. Do some scrying, yeah. then copy it again, and, and just get that going. Really nice with, like, cooped up as mm -hmm. well. You can keep exiling yeah. creatures for five mana. Um, I believe we don't have any in the list, but another great combo you can yeah. do uh, with this card, especially because it untaps. So if you have a mm -hmm. ton of mana in the late game, you can really, really take over the game with Yenna. It's a, one of these really high ceiling yeah. and really high floors. You know, four mana, four, four, you can't really go wrong. Yeah, that's basically, you know, what you'd want from a rare and then yeah. a couple of extra cherries on top. Absolutely. Oh, man, Chris is in a bad way here. Ferocious Werefox guard change with Sir Armand in hand. Mix with Sir Armand. So Sir oh. Armand could put the counter on the 6-7 to make it a 8-9, and then you attack with that, and maybe some weird blocks from Francesco not respecting one plus one plus one trick mm -hmm. could really kind of go the distance here, depending on what Chris goes for. Might just want to, you know, get some of your other creatures up to more blockable ranges. Right here. To combat we go. Let's see what Chris is going to do at this rate. This flyer is going to take him out. So yeah. Okay, here we go. Turn things sideways. Let's see what happens when we go to blocks here for Francesco. I really like putting the roll on the Agatha's champion mm -hmm. because this is really tempting you to block the 6-7, to block a 6-6. Six, six, and then you get that pump to really kind of make a blowout situation mm -hmm. on the savior. Stormkeld Vanguard, Howling Gale Fang, and Agatha's Champion declared as attackers here, I believe. Big thanks now for, for Francesco. Yeah, this is a big, big turn because you might want to just, you know, leave your 6 7 a little bit out of combat. Yeah, here we go. If there's not any other blocks alongside it, this could be big, big trouble. Yeah, then that's the biggest creature off oh, the battlefield no. here for Francesco, and that'll open the door for Chris to just start slamming. Yeah, and Francesco's hellbent, so this is, you know, no tricks to be had here. You can't sacrifice, you know, the hopeful vigil or anything mm -hmm. right now. Yen has just come in, so no copying there, no mana to do so either. All right, so blocks declared. Okay, so this is a seven power creature. Okay. Yes. Monster roll, getting the buff yeah. from yeah. the roll itself sure. as well so as Sir Armand. Nothing tramples, it's just four. Right? Yeah, this is yeah, just four. Yeah. So that just, an even trade doesn't doesn't take it this down or anything. Or that does? No, it's not a trade. I think it's a kill, but there's only eight toughness. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. You're at nine. And Agatha's champion down, and the board looks a lot cleaner now. Huge draw for Chris there. Being able stuff. to, you know, put a ton of power. Yeah, of course, the Sir uh, uh, pumps it as well. Yeah. So, yeah, that was uh, a huge turn for Chris. Yeah. Painful attack there for Francesco, losing his biggest creature on the board. Yeah. And now, I mean, you do still see the life total seven to nine. It, you know, it'd be a lot better for Francesco to be at six because then you have a two-turn clock with this flyer. But yeah. at this point, you just got to ask yourself if you're Francesco, do I hold back 
and how do I win the game if I'm holding back my yeah. flyer, or do I try to push through with the flyer and try to do some chump blocking oh um, with hopeful vigil tokens and Yenna? Because we've got the monster roll on the 6-7, which is then an 8-9 yep, with Sir Armand, who's also 4 power. Then we've got a 2-2, two, two, a 1-1, one, one, a 4-2, and a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, I mean, the Fnatic, uh, Fnatic Firebolt is a good draw. Yeah. It's definitely relevant. Okay. How many instants and sorceries do we have in the bin? Yeah, though? exactly. What does that take care of? The Verdant Outrider only? Maybe Sir, Sir, Sir Armand? Armand? Yeah. Is it instant so you can do some tricks? Yeah. I don't think we've seen very many instants and sorceries, though. I don't see many either, do we? We see Francesca. Return Triumphant? Yeah, there's one, so it can do three damage at the moment, I believe. Yeah. Sorcery? Yep. Red Cat Thief, Red Cat Thief. Mm. Yeah, that's all I'm yeah. seeing as well right now. Oh, no, there is the other removal spell, the Stroke of Midnight. Yes, so it should sure. be four damage, okay. which is decent. You know, yeah, that'll still, get rid of Sir Armand. But yeah. Even if Sir Armand's, off, Sir Armand's off the battlefield, that's still a 7-8 you're dealing yeah, with. Yeah, with Trample. Trample, so. yeah. Got to preserve life totals here, and Francesco. And here we go. If he can find any way to I'm do okay. the ding, it's not going to happen. And that's yeah, going to be yeah. Chris Ferber picking up the win in a two. Oh, that was. Oh, I, I got to admit that was a lot closer than I thought it would be. But yes. wow. Yeah, that was incredible. I really did not think uh, Chris was going to be favored there. I really thought we were going to game three, but it's hard to count out Chris Ferber when you are, you know, now 12 and two on the season at the professional level. That's just absolutely incredible. Playing for the trophy uh, next round. <laughs> <laughs> the draft trophy. I the draft say. trophy, yes. Yeah. For sure. We'd love to be 3 and 0 after the yeah. draft portion of day one. We'll be right back after the break with Maria at the desk. <laughs> 